Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Logan Power Show. Uh, it's me, your host, Calvin Logan, and I'm excited for what's going on uh, across the nation when people are speaking about social injustice. Uh, people have had enough. Uh, people want to make a difference. Uh, you can't be mute in this season. Uh, a mute person, that means you're pretty much going with the flow. Well, I got with me a lady who's not going with the flow. She's about seeing the righteous stand up and make a difference. Uh, she's doing some things in the good old Midwest, in good old state of Kentucky, the one and only Miss Shay Woolfolk. How you doing, ma'am? Hi, how are you? Yes, how's everything? Uh, you know, it's good even with what's going on. You know, you just you learn to adjust and move accordingly. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Now, what you got going on in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, um, you and a couple of others have been going on. This is that'd be like day 45 or day 50. This is, I believe, day 56, actually. It is 56. Gotcha. All right. So day 56, um, as Brianna Taylor, her life was uh, totally taken away from us too early. Uh, as you do recall, um, she was in her home and mistaken identity uh breaking into the, the police coming down into her home and opening fire uh her life was taken and the people uh, were outraged um there's been no justice at this point in time um things have been talked about but people have not seen change now you and a couple of other people a lot of other ones as well i don't have all the names of them but i know people are not I don't want to say like nobody's um, less than a person, but I know you're in front of us. So tell us why are you standing up and why are you still um, continue moving on? Because a lot of times you see it a lot where people get caught up in the hype and the next thing they'll be like, well, hey, I'm done. I did my part. But y'all are going like some seriously strong, strong where you're not allowing you're not going to be quiet until changes really come. So tell us why you do what you do. Um, well, you know, first off, I do it as media. I cover everything um, for my media company, for other outlets and whatever. But it's about getting the truth out. Now, as well as being media, I support the movement. So, yes, I, I do protest. I march. I do my part. Which, um, And I don't align myself with one group. Um, I, I never thought that was a smart move. You know, I'm media. But then I'm also Shay K. So as media, it's about telling the truth and making sure that the true narrative is told. It's about making sure that the global community gets a chance to actually see what's going on, unedited, unfiltered, and without any corporate entity telling us what we have to say. Gotcha. As far as Shay K, you know, I go out and I protest, support, do my part to propel the movement. Um, to be honest, you know, I'm a mother. I'm a mother and a grandmother. I'm a mom of three and a grandmother of two. And I have two daughters and my youngest is my son. And my son is special needs and he's only nine years old. And the doctor told me early, he's gonna be about six, seven. So you got a six, seven black man who hears and learns differently. I also have a grandson who has autism. He's about six, five. So this is my second black man, six, five. Uh, hears things differently, he's a black man. And I'll be honest, you know, we have to have the conversations with our kids that other races don't have to have. Gotcha. You know, I have to, even at nine years old, especially with this one, I've had to have this conversation with my son um, because he's been with me doing some of the protests in the car when I cover it because I want him to understand what's going on. So when I always say that I protest and march for them, I do that for my son and all sons and all daughters because this is no longer even about just black men, it's black men and women. And it's anyone that police brutality or, or the police feel that they can brutalize and take advantage of, kill, murder to propel their agenda or just for kicks. Gotcha. So for me, I do it because, and this is my favorite quote, it's by Milton Hershey, is he said, do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes it's just about doing the right thing. And in this situation, the right thing is to make sure that I make my voice heard. I use my platforms to amplify what I'm supposed to amplify. And also just doing the right thing. Gotcha. And um, I'm a little girl. I'm born with support. But also, again, I'm a mother. And I looked at that now, almost 26-year-old child who was shot in her home. 
And I have a daughter who's almost that age. She could have been my daughter. That could have been me at 26 years old. No one knows my life. I, mean, I talk about it sometimes, but that could have been me at 26 years old. Absolutely. Now, people always got the narrative. You always hear the 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 other side of the of the coin. Um, you say, well, why is it we we don't get the outrage when it comes to I don't know what I guess statistic for this one, black on black crime. That's the only thing that I've ever seen, to be honest. I don't understand it. Um I'm just I just want people to understand. Uh when you have a certain statistic that just focuses on one nationality, that to me is a problem. Just saying, I'm just letting y'all know, like if this is the only thing you're focusing on, do you do everyone the same way? Is everyone the same bucket? Or you make this separate entity bucket? But that's the argument you always hear. The biggest argument you hear is black on black crime. You always hear Chicago all the time. And a lot of my family's Chicago and, and sometimes I, I tell people, okay. That's not Chicago. That may be outside of Chicago. It's not Chicago. That's not downtown. You're not co- When people talk about certain crimes and certain things go on, I'm like, yeah, they ain't bringing that up downtown. That's not happening. It's not going to happen at Wrigley Field. You're not going to have it at Comiskey Park. You're not going to bring it um, – to, to, to where the Bulls play. You're not bringing a soldier field. You're not bringing the places where it has money. So the part that I'm really confused, we always hear about Chicago. We always hear about Chicago. But I think, wait, well, what about, I live in North Charleston. North Charleston, South Carolina, our statistics is just as high as Chicago. But we don't talk about it because exactly. we're, we're not in the bucket. And you, you got Los Angeles. You got uh, New York City. Uh, Atlanta, Miami, we just go through the big cities. You know, everyone got an issue. It's not just, I always hear Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. I hear it, but I'm trying to understand so that I can can relate. Because I'm like this, blood is blood, death is death. But we try to always hear. So that's why, that's my argument. The, the, the rebuttal to you what do you say like okay why do we don't get an uproar when it comes on black on black crime and when it comes to a white person a black person we all up and roll all up in it all up all over the place what do you say to when people to argue to that question well my stance on when people throw out black on black crime i just go ah. <laughs> one there's no such thing as black on black crime crime is crime what happens is you, the statistics are based on the area you're in. So if I'm sitting with my black friends and a fight breaks out and we're two black people fighting, but when it happens with white folks, we don't say white on white crime. You don't say Asian on Asian crime. You say crime. And I feel like the term black on black crime is used to further oppress us, to further get away from the actual issue. So okay, like I'll say I come from a very mixed family. So in my family reunion, if I fight with my white cousin Susan, are we gonna say that's black or white crime? Or is it gonna say it's family crime? That's just crime. But if I fight with a little black mama, uh, what is that? If I fight with my biracial kid, you know, you know, we start to get into those types of semantics. And really those types of terms are meant just the same thing as pulling out of Chicago. And I got family in Chicago. Shout out to Chat <laughs> Um, people always throw it out like they're just going around just going crazy. And I'm like, my family isn't doing that up there. You know, that's it's a statistic. We can move that, like you said, to every city and pull crime statistics. Um, for me, I want us to get in an uproar over all crime. I want us to say right is right, wrong is wrong. And in a situation like the Breonna Taylor case, we had a young African-American woman. And we can take the rape race out of it. We can just say we had a young woman. And the, the issue with that was the no-knock warrants, was the fact that the police may have had a different agenda, things like that. So even if we take race out of it, we can look at those wrongs. And unfortunately, though, because we have been such an oppressed people, race for us is something we have to bring in. I would love for us to get to a point where we could all just look at everything as a whole and take race out of it and just say, this is a crime and it's wrong. Murder is wrong. Rape is wrong. Assault is wrong, whatever, instead of using the race. But unfortunately, racism, because it's an ism, it is a learned behavior and a tool that is used by those that oppress us to control, we have to acknowledge that yes, racism exists. So 
for us, it's like we have a zillion different pins pointing at us on every issue when at the core, we could simplify it and just say it's a wrong and a right thing. But right. we have to got all these layers. We got to feel back to get to it. And that becomes very um, traumatizing for us as a community when you really think about it. That's a lot that we leave our house with every day to deal with. All of yep. us, even when we don't want to admit it, it impacts us. Absolutely. Now, I, I got to admit, you guys, for 56 days, it's been a lot of peaceful protesting. And for those that are listening, it's peaceful. What I mean by that, they're not damaging nothing. They just want their voice to be heard. We understand they were on the, the, on the attorney general's lawn. Totally get it. But it brought a sense of attention to a situation because, let's be truthful, the media has sort of downplayed Breonna Taylor's story. It's not the frontline news. If right now we're back at the COVID. First, we were at nationwide protests. Then after that sort of went into like where it is, now we're right back at COVID is the top of the list. The Breonna Taylor situation is still going on. George Floyd still is going on. Mr. Ahmad Aubrey is still going on. There's a ton of cases that are still going on with where we're not sort of saying like, let's look at this a little bit more closely, but you guys are not even playing. You're out there, attorney general's lawn, peaceful protests. A ton of people got, <laughs> got arrested because you, you saying you're um, on somebody else's property is considered to be trespassing. And the, the law is a law. I'm going to be honest with you, but like me personally, I love it. I love, I love the fight. The question that people always say, what do you want? Because the reason why I ask the question is that, and I want to be very um, strategic when I say this, we understand the NBA saying Black Lives Matter, we're going to put it in the back of a, of a T-shirt, jersey, whatever. The NFL says we're going to put this on the decals on the back of the helmet. Fantastic. Baseball, America's sport. Said they're going to put Black Lives Matter on the baseball field. Totally get it. Get that. Clear as day. Now, the problem is, where is the change? Because you can say a slogan all day long, and you can tell me, hey, man, Black Lives Matter. Got a T-shirt. Everything. We love it. My people. But ain't the thing you're doing to change a thing. Ain't a law being passed. You're talking about I'm giving back into the community. You hear all these different programs. I totally get it. But what specifically the people in Louisville, Kentucky, what do you all want? Because I don't want the people to lose the narrative. What are you all are looking for so the protest will stop? That's what I want to figure out. Well, um, one of the things, you know, everyone says no justice, no peace. And what that came from, from my understanding, because I was not there when they coined it, but it's until there is justice for Breonna Taylor, there will be no peace in the city. And what they mean by that, they continue with the protest. And, you know, a protest is designed to disrupt the norm. And you're right, it's been peaceful. You know, there was one day they had looting. And, of course, that was the narrative that went around the globe. But I live here, and I'm telling you, it only lasted for 24 hours. Now, did it shake the city? Yes. Did it shake me? Yes. And it, it was something to see your city basically burn. But when it's all said, then it's a peaceful protest. It's disruptive, but it's peaceful. What you... What we want to see happen, and this is, I'll speak for myself and those that I've had conversations, we want to see change. And we don't mean, like you said, just a slogan, because you can say that all day long. That does not enact change. It's acknowledging the issue, but change is change in policy and change in laws. The kind of change that makes killing innocent black men and women illegal. That means that if an officer does that, they will be held accountable and they will not be able to hide behind their shield, behind blue, behind an FOP contract. Because see, that's what's happening here. This means that they will be able to be prosecuted by a, a jury of their peers and held accountable. Because too often, the lives of black men and women or anyone who's economically challenged, the disabled, those who are mentally uh, impaired, are so discounted by the powers that be that when we're hunted or we're harmed at the hands of the police or authority, it doesn't matter to them. It's a everyday as usual. 
And the change that we need is for that to be so wrong that it doesn't occur. And the only way that they can be so wrong is that folks are held accountable and they know that they can do time, they can go to jail, they can lose it all by doing that. When you can hide behind a shield and you know, I can do this and I'll be protected, it's not a wrong to them. It's uh -huh. business as usual. So we need change. We need policy change, change in laws. We need folks in office who not only look like us, but think about not only the community as a whole, but also very specific areas of the community, those who are impoverished, those who are um, not represented well. Here in Louisville, Kentucky, you know, they have a thing called Black Louisville, which means it's the Black section of, and it is, it is a whole subculture and a whole sub-city. It has its own issues. We need people in office who understand that, but also know there are things that certain areas like the West End of Louisville, that's a, a very economically challenged area. That area needs this to be brought to the same level as the others. That realizes that there, our school systems need to be uh, improved, that politically we need to be represented well, that there are things that our children need in the community. We need those types of changes because we can, as you said, say a slogan all day long, but if there's no change, we are then all just saying a slogan. Absolutely. Now, you're now you, you you're rolling the dice you're talking about political people put in place now <laughs> kentucky is very funny governor <laughs> attorney general senators house of representatives i'm speaking to judges i'm talking about there's a whole thing that's coming in november is there anybody that we need to be looking for that's fighting on your behalf the reason why i'm asking this question and people that are listening to me I'm a, I, I, this is going this is going to be a shocker for you. The president of the United States is not should be your focus at all. That should be the last thing that should be on your mind. It should be the senators, house of representatives, judges, mayors, city council, county council, the sheriffs. Those are the ones you need to keep your eyes and your ears focused on. The president is the last thing you should even focus on. That's just my personal opinion. I know I've read the laws. I know about legislatives, executive, and judicial. And for people that don't know what I'm talking about, there's three executive branches. The executive branch does not have no power if the legislative branch don't say yeah. Judicial branch is going to force what legislative is going to say. Executive, you are just the, what we call the marketing tool. You are the person in front of the camera. You represent the country. But you do have power now. The president does have power. He has military power. The Mar United States Marine Corps does not fall under the Army, Navy, the Coast Guard. If the president said today we go into war with this country and decided, you know what, I ain't using the Navy, Army, I ain't calling the Air Force, and I won't go to the Marine Corps, he can do that under legal, legal rights. He can. But the other stuff, he, he can, you can write an executive order and say, black people going to get $100 tomorrow. The legislative branch say, heck no, it's going to be heck no. So tell us in your area so people are aware who should we be looking who she people should be looking out for in your area so they should look for to vote for in november so this is one of those things ooh, that november, <laughs> i absolutely agree with you as much as i have to stay for the gentleman in office uh i realized a long time ago a lot of folks don't know you know i used to have political aspirations so i'm big that's why i would say policy is power that's why i push so much for policy because you're right that's where the power comes in. We can argue about something, we can debate on it, we can march about it, but until we actually put that change in it, it don't matter. And I'll be honest, I apologize profusely to everyone about Mitch McConnell, because no matter where I travel, because you know, I, I host concerts and things like this, I'm always on the road, and people, I've had people walk up to me, I've had artists that I bring to the stage, say, hey, you know, y'all gave us Mitch McConnell, and all I can say, I know, I'm so sorry. I didn't personally do it, but yeah, Kentucky did that. And that's why we are. So it's a funny state because you just have Louisville and Lexington that are really your democratic cities. Everyone else, eh, they vote against their own interests. In this state, priority number one for us is to ditch Mitch. So right now, and, and I was a, I'm a huge Charles Booker supporter. I endorsed him. He only lost by 6,000 and some votes. I'll probably start crying just talking about it. 
because I still have questions about that. But that leaves us with Amy McGrath. So for us, it's about getting Mitch out and putting Amy in. Because I do feel like as a whole, we can put power and, and uh, flames to the feet to make her, put, uh, I guess, push, I don't want to say agenda, but yes, push agendas that impact our community uh, in a positive way. So she's one to keep your eye on. I think here in Kentucky, Mitch has done so much wrong that we will gladly get behind her and help propel her into that seat because we know without that change, because you got to understand, Mitch McConnell is the most powerful man in politics. Now he is. Mm -hmm. he is he's the head, head of the, he's head, head of the Senate. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very. Because without any regret, without any doubt, he will let you know. He is not a man of the average person. And he's definitely not a man for anyone of color. It's all about money and power with him. And, and you know, that top 1%. So for us around here, ditching Mitch is priority number one when it comes to policy. But, you know, I'm honored to, and proud to say that here in Louisville, like on our Metro Council, we just elected our youngest Metro Council member ever, Takari Arthur, a 28-year-old African-American gentleman who is a professor who is phenomenal. We have Keisha Dorsey. Uh, she's uh, over the district that is about Shively, Kentucky, which is still part of Louisville. We have a lot of young um, Black people who have come in office, but you got a council, I think it's 27 council members, and you got five or six. Okay, so we still got a long way to go. So it's about having the right balance. And I'm not saying everybody on the council needs to be black. No, it needs to represent our city, but it needs to be people who are progressive thinkers, people who are open to new ideas. One of the biggest problems here in Louisville is we have black leadership that needs to go. We have black leadership that's been doing the same thing because you got to understand with Mitch, we have some folks and representatives who've been there 33 years, 34 years. And if you look down their checklist of what they've done for the community, there's nothing. And see, we're, so we're caught in a loop. It's time to get them out of office. So yes, on a local level, black, now we have a lot of, of black judges on the bench. You know, I was honored about almost two years ago, we had five African-American females who I know personally who were running for, uh, for judicial seats uh, here. And it was amazing to be a part of that. And I think four of them won. One has, a, and I know them dearly, uh, one in particular. We've had seen that change. It's coming. But we still have a long way to go. So for us in November, um, the mayoral, woo gotta get some mayor. That's a huge thing. And I feel like in the next few days, we're gonna see a lot of breaking stories on who's gonna run for office. I have some insight. I've had, I do know certain people who are gonna be on the ballot. I can't publicly say it yet. Sure. Um, we're gonna have some different options. That is a huge thing for the city of Louisville. Gotcha. Well, for the state, because you gotta understand why Louisville <laughs> is a big, the biggest city. We're not the whole state. Statewise, we have to get rid of Mitch McConnell. I feel like that is the most detrimental person in office to us right now and the country, because again, he's the most powerful man in politics right now. And when you have someone that powerful who is not for an agenda of the people, it's dangerous for all of us as a country. Absolutely. And for those who don't know how powerful Mitch McConnell is, um, when it comes to senators, he's the head majority. And when, what that means <laughs> is you can say all day long the House put something up, but if the Senate says, heck no, then it's going to be a heck no. Remember, both parties got to be on it. See, the House and the Senators got to be on the same page. So that's why you can, you, can, you can have progressive thinking and throw it up. And when it comes into these Senators' hands, they look on that thing. They look at it. Look, mm -mm -mm. And you got to talk to your PAC people, you know, whoever – Whoever gets lit, and then, like I said, if you ever hear, no disrespect, if you ever hear Mitch McConnell speak, I don't know about y'all, that man gonna keep it straightforward. That he said he is not about um, change in a lot of different ways. He's the one who stopped the previous administration for getting the, the Supreme Court justice when it was that person's time, and he's holding off to this next one because for those who are not paying attention. You got two Supreme Court justices are too old. Let's be honest. They are too old. I, listen, I, I have no problem with the elderly. Listen, <laughs> I got parents who's elderly. I'm all with it. But baby, you got to have some change. 
some really good listen you got to bring some serious generation z type of thinking baby boomer thinking is those days are over with and you're not going to be successful with that type of thinking so finally before you go how can people get in contact with you say they want to get connected with you how can they get connected with you sure so you know even though I've got this behind me this mugshot i promise i don't look like that always you know a lot of folks don't realize because i met folks who didn't follow me before um that i do quite a bit so i'll just tell folks you can literally type in my name on social media c-h-e-a put a space in there get to the middle initial k and i pop right up and i tell folks you can follow me on facebook at the real shay k period wolf folk on instagram at shay shay 74 you can go to my website, which is shakwolfolk.com. As you can see, my name is the brand. Uh, or you can just Google me. Uh, I do ask during this time that folks who follow me and watch the live streams, because that's something I do every day. And that's what has really uh, just kind of shifted everything here recently. Follow the live streams. Even if you don't agree with me, follow and watch the live streams. Because even if we don't agree, I want you to see a different perspective. Yeah. Even if you don't agree with my take on it, I still want you to watch because maybe there's something in there that'll make something click or it'll at least spark a conversation with you and someone else. The more we talk about it, I think the more resolution we can have. And if you're too close-minded to, to follow and watch the lives, watch it anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> amen. Amen. Now, the biggest thing for those who are not paying attention, that is a lot of extra charges they put on her in the back of that dog on paper. God bless. Yeah. I mean, they, they must be writing like, and like, listen, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, when it comes to law enforcement, right? And they say they're going to charge you with something. All right, let's be honest. No law, no law officer knows the law by heart. They got the system out there and they got this thing. They're going to put it in place in the system. They're going to say like, hey, what the situation was? All right, cool. This is the situation. Bet. Now, you can overcharge somebody. And why you're overcharging for two reasons. One, makes your bail more. If I overcharge your tail, that means that you're going to have a big bail. That makes it what happens. If I overcharge and I compact you with all these things, that's why you got to have a good lawyer. That's why you got to have that lawyer on the phone be like, hey, this is the situation. So, Miss Shay K, like I said again, she's powerful. So, we just blessed to have her here on the Logan Power Show. Uh, you know, um, definitely someone you want to follow. Uh, don't like you look in the back, she's smiling, she's smiling because she was protesting and she got she was one of the people who was um, overly charged uh, for fighting for what she believed in. And I'm gonna be straightforward. Well, with you. I was actually working, I wasn't, I was actually working, I was working, camera and all. That's funny. Why? So that night is quite interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keyword. She was filming that time doing her broadcast and she was put in with the, everybody. Oh my and, God. And then she was overcharged on top of that as well. So that's why um, it's mistaken identity, uh, is what I call it. Uh, I'll say, I'll, I would say, mistaken being your complexion. That's what I see. Because there was a lot of other, there was another other. News outlets, other people, different color scheme. They did not get taken down. So let's be truthful, everybody. There is a difference. But without further ado, we'll let that be that. Um, definitely follow, support her. Uh, we pray everybody changes. We play for change here at the Logan Power Show. We love y'all, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>